Uh, Darren Hinch, this is on his official Senator D. Hinch letterhead. On 3RW this morning, I predicted a One Nation bombshell would drop today. Mm -hmm. Full stop. A news tip from a usually reliable source. Since yeah, when? Oh, that's so awkward. Uh, usually reliable. Yeah. Since when do senators go out there saying something about a, a rival party from a usually, usually reliable, reliable Not always. Source. And, and knowing that it would resonate around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand the Neil Mitchell program received similar information, well, from a different source. So he's saying that he... Is that and true? He, I don't know that don't uh, know. Neil uh, confirmed that. I don't know I, that's about that. That's not what I heard. There were erroneous news reports I was going to raise an issue in the Senate. Well, knowing Darren's past track record, that wouldn't surprise anybody. Uh, not true. I did confirm to Mitchell that it did not involve any of the four Pauline Hanson One Nation Senators. Like this morning, we await developments, DH. I mean, is that the, really the language from a Senator? Pauline Hanson joins us online. Thanks for your time. Hello, Steve. What's that all Hello, about? Uh, I have no idea. No idea whatsoever, to tell you the honest truth. We actually came here to Parliament, had a meeting, and next thing I'm walking back into my office and I had a media guy who was at my door, down at Southern Door, and I said, oh, I said, um, because I, I said I would do an interview with the one and over citizenship, and he said, oh, no, I said, well, what are you here for? And he's trying to say, oh, Gonski. Well, I had known that, I didn't know this was going on. Then I had to get security guards here because I had this scrum outside my, my office door. And um, so this has been going on, on all day. We've heard these rumours, have no idea. Have you and spoken to Darren? Laughing. Did you ask him what he was going on about? No, you know what? I've got no time for him whatsoever, to tell you the truth. I really haven't any time for him. I think this is... Um, I am, I'm angry about it. This is about... He's put out a perception there. Um, he, he's put out a perception. A lot of people will think there is there is something to it. Those people don't follow through and think there's nothing, you know, haven't heard there is absolutely nothing to it, nothing's come of it, but that perception. And I think it's disgusting that a man in his position as senator to actually do that, I think it's so wrong. I thought so it was I, pretty wrong. It wasn't is, may, you know, it was there will be a bombshell drop today. Mm -hmm. That's that's the words he said. What's it got to do with him? Be, what's it got to do with him anyway? And it involves, uh, it made clear, it involved James Ashby. I think that's really yeah. uh, a rotten thing to say unless you're absolutely certain that it's going to happen. That's just, uh, that's just gossip mongering. Well, it is. And then we had ru heard rumours that they were actually going, police were going to come here, raid our office and go through their computers. So anyway, that, you know, that's sort of um, on our doorstep. Nothing happened. You know, we're so busy here all day. I just got on and did my duties that I needed to do and, and just waited for something to happen. But nothing happened. So it was really shame. And you don't expect that, anything thought, to happen, right? Name. Oh, God, no. There's nothing there. James said, I have no idea. The media ring number, he's... And they said, oh, you're in, being investigated. No, I'm not. Have the police rung you? No, they haven't. And this is, was the answer. I bet, but, Pauline, have you heard what I've heard, that there's going to be an absolute bombshell dropped about Darren Hinch tomorrow? <laughs> Andrew, stop, what? stop, what? stop Real bombshell. Stop I think this, could, this, this might drive him out of uh, yeah. the Senate. Real bombshell. I'm sure Pauline's it's not, heard it's it too. A real, it's a real shame. Yeah. You know, this, this is not the, This is not, not what this place is about. Imagine if you, yeah. imagine if you, Pauline, had yeah. had gone on radio here with Andrew and I tonight and said what Andrew just said that there's going to be a major bombshell dropped about the Hinch Party tomorrow. They'd rip you apart if it didn't happen. They'd well, tear you apart, limb from limb. They'd say, oh, there she is, she's out gossip-mongering. Yeah. Look, um, it is a shame, like I said, we've got an, an, an important job to do here. People are relying on us, and I think the public are going to see through all this. I don't think he's come out of it very well today at all, and uh, what I can hear, what I've heard is that his office shut down answering the phones because they were inundated with people abusing them. Hey, Pauline, I read that um, somewhere, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, either that I didn't read it or it wasn't w well reported, but uh, that you were going to give a tick to the the uh, the education package that's so got the Catholic schools up in arms. They're furious. Um, are you going well, to agree to it, are you? Um, I've just finished um, further discussions with uh, Birmingham. Looks like One Nation will support this. We've also... What's happened is more changes have actually happened with this. Uh, Chris Back was anti it because his association with the Catholic churches, uh, Catholic schools I should say. That's the so Liberal they're, Senator, yep. They're, they're, they're making some changes to this. Now the funding to the Catholic schools will not be altered 
that this next year at all. It will remain the same. So then they can actually do their assessment of the whole lot. They're, the whole Gonski that I can understand about it is you have states that are very... Um, they're not funded properly, right? And that's Western Australia. They are at the bottom of the pile. Queensland, we're not too bad. We're quit pretty much at the top. What I can understand, what I've gathered from the whole lot, is that Gonski is going to pay... Each child is going to be further funded by the tune of about 3.7%. So that's right across the board. Each child, every child, is going to get the same amount of money for funding. And it's about just over $10,000 for primary schools and it's about $13,000 per high school. On top of this, they will pay an extra for a child with a disability, whether it be autism or any other disability. And that's paid on top of... Then, on top of that again... You get an extra funding if you live in a lower social economic area. Now, yeah, but the, yeah, but the Catholics are saying the Catholics are saying this formula where a school is paid, uh, all the schools are paid alike in the same formula. It takes into account the social economic status of the area they're in. Doesn't take into account the fact that the Catholics tend to draw from the poorer people in that uh, social economic area, yes. and so the, f the 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 funding formula actually works against them. It's not fair. It ta treats as equal what well, isn't equal. But if I'm mistaken, I think Pauline's saying they've now agreed to it's pause that, that for only 12 for months. one year, yes. only for one that's year. That's right. So that's right. We'll see the funding to this school. So there's no difference in funding. What's going to happen to changes now? They're going to look at funding an extra $1.6 billion over the next um, four years that's going to be put into the system, right? So for whom? it's going to increase the funding for it um, overall. Now, this here, what they're saying about, there was talk about what area you live in. What they're doing now is they're going to set up a board to actually investigate this, the areas that they actually live in, right? So that, that will be addressed. So let's um, get it clear. You're I, gonna, you, one nation will tick uh, off on Gonski. Uh, what I have said to the Minister too, and I keep saying this all the time, it's got nothing to do with the funding really. What we need to do is address the school system itself. I've told them it's failed in the curriculum. We need a national curriculum. We need to ensure that all kids right through the year 12 must learn maths and science and English. It must be part of the course. I've also indicated that I want better teaching teachers and better quality teachers instead of these ones that are that can't teach maths and don't have it they've assured me that part of this um, um, deal they will actually be putting in recommendations and actually to um, to put it to board because the board will be discussing all this so what I'm wanting this is what I've said we need to address what's happening in our classrooms for the kids throwing money at it is not the answer OK, we'll keep an eye on all of that. I want to get on to uh, the UN Refugee Convention and, and your motion mm -hmm. in the Parliament. Just before I do, one quick question. Have you, uh, with two days left of, of sitting, Wednesday, Thursday, have you solidified your position at all on the cross-media ownership changes? Um, we're still doing discussions with regard to that. Um, haven't come to a final decision. I've had talks last night with the uh, Minister and again tonight... So um, we are making headway there and and changes to it, so I think it's going to be beneficial to, to everyone, yes. What happened on refugees in the Senate today? Um, nothing actually happened with it. Uh, it, um, it. Well, it went to the vote. So I think we ended up six against the rest so of So you made your point. <laughs> well, look, quite a few put up uh, uh, motions, uh, notice motions with regards to the refugees. But we made a point there, and I still believe that we need to actually, you know, not be tied to other countries and the UN telling us about how we should deal with our refugees. Mm. I think that we should take control, full control of our borders. And I don't believe that, you know... Steve and Andrew, when I have people that are living, families living in their cars, and they're parking at hospitals purely for the basis of security, because they know they can walk in, use the bathrooms, use the toilet, and it's security there. Now, this is what pe how people in Australia are living. Yes, I feel sorry for refugees and people around the rest of the world, but we have, what, 60 million refugees in total, probably even more. We can't look after everyone. I want to clean up our own backyard first. Yeah, and I guess those people life. living in their cars are not going to be able to get Slater Gordon to take, go to court on their behalf and sue the government no, and won't. walk away with $37,000 in their pocket, Pauline. 
They won't. And, you know, I've got a responsibility as a Member of Parliament to the people of Australia first and foremost. I can't be a representative, representative for the world. And that's my, what my job is here. When I can get things cleaned up here and help the people here, then I have an open heart and I'll help whoever I can. But my job is here is here for the people here in Australia first. Well, you must and, have uh, been, um, you must have been uh, pretty chuffed at the latest news poll this week. I know margins of error and all that, but mm -hmm. fundamentally you've gone up from 9% to 11% in the vote, and that's after having a pretty uh, rocky last couple of months, a uh, media onslaught, things not handled all that well. You've had robocalls in Queensland with these illegally taped yep. recordings of you, etc., and you've gone up to 11%. What is that telling you? Well, uh, you know, I haven't had an opportunity to do it yet, but I should go and thank Murray Watt, Senator Murray Watt, and I should thank um, Chisholm, and I should thank Darren Hinch and uh, Jacqueline Lambie for all this, because every time they, they get on the airwaves and they're trying to be done, it's just discredit me and the party, um, my membership comes in more and I actually have more support. Um, look, I'm looking at the humorous, humorous side of all this. Um, look, I'm you know pleased you can about? still laugh. Yeah, you know what it's all about? It's that I'm on the floor of Parliament, I'm trying to speak up for the Australian people and on important issues that the majors have just swept under the carpet or it's too hard for them to deal with. We've had so many inroads and we've got so much done that I'm, I'm proud of our achievements. And that's what it's about. And the people have seen through all this. And they're seeing what I'm doing, what I'm fighting for. That's where it's you know, in the polls. They're disregarding all this rubbish. And you can, I can go back 20 years ago. They did exactly the same to me then, 20 years ago, with all this rubbish. Even in 2007, with the nude photos, it's been one thing after another. They've tried to discredit me, to drag me down, because they know that I'm taking support away from them. And, well, thank you. Uh, and I thank the people for their support. I truly do, from the bottom of my heart. I have fought for 18 years to get back here on the floor of Parliament, and I hope that the people appreciate what I'm trying to do for them. Well, we thank you for talking to us uh, across our 56 stations right around the country. You know you're always welcome. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Senator Pauline Hanson there. You're right to make that point about the polls, Andrew. I mean, they are going in the other direction to everyone else's. Uh, Yes, absolutely right. 11% is not bad, and uh, that, that will guarantee that One Nation is a force in uh, the Senate for, uh, it, provided they maintain it, of course, that that will be a force for a long time.